Hi, this is Brendan Cronin from the Queensland Eye Institute. I keep getting requests for this video, so I've decided to finally cover it. I'm going to talk about some basic biometry skills and what you need to know to do good biometry with the Eye Well Master 700. It's not a really comprehensive video. I'm just going to try and cover four topics that are really important. So the four topics we're going to cover are checking the white to white value on the biometry, looking at the overview OCT, checking the Chang wearing cord, and the understanding of what spherical equivalent is and how it determines picking your lens. We're all aware that the white to white value is an important component of newer IOL calculation formulas, but what you need to appreciate is that on the IOL Master 700, you're given an image of the white to white value, and we're talking about the horizontal white to white value, and it is important that the white markers on that image are at the limbus of the eye. This information is used by the formula to pick the right lens for you. So it is important that you check that photograph and make sure that the limbus is correctly identified by the machine so that you're using the correct white to white value for your patient. This information can be manually altered if you need to. Occasionally, patients with a limbus that's difficult to determine or a little bit indistinct they may need a manual measurement or to use another machine such as the Penicam and that data can be altered manually if you need to. The overview scan on the IWell Master is so handy, it lets you look for decentration and to make sure that you've got a nice image. You can look to see that the axial length is going to the fovea, and you can see in this image here, you can see the cataract, you can see the cornea, the reasonably small pupil. Then you see in this image here, that the patient has an intraocular lens in the eye. So obviously it's important that that eye is put on pseudophagic mode. That's not the eye you're going to be picking a primary intraocular lens for. So that overview image really is very handy at picking up any errors in your uh, in information, particularly the information that you have put into the eye, looking sure that the axial length really is going to the fovea. The Eyewell Master 700 gives you the Chang wearing cord, which is analogous to the angle kappa. So remember that the angle between the visual axis, the line connecting the fixation point with the fovea and the pupillary axis. This, this value is really important for determining which patients are good or more importantly, which patients are bad candidates for multifocal intraocular lens. Typically, most surgeons uh, comfortable using multifocal lenses will say that you should avoid a multifocal lens in a patient with an angle kappa over 0.5. Here's an extreme case of a large Chang wearing cord where you can actually see the difference between the reflex there and see that there's a large Chang wearing cord. But obviously you need to look at the Chang wearing cord variable. It's very important. Finally, when you're ready to choose your intraocular lens, it's so important that you appreciate that the lens choice given to you by the IOL master is the spherical equivalent. This is so important for patients with high astigmatism. If you look at this patient, it's the right eye of the patient. The total keratometry value is 5.05 diopters of astigmatism at 82 degrees. So if you pick the lens suggested by the eye well master, giving a spherical equivalent of minus 0.11, if you were to pick that 16 diopter lens, obviously that's a non-toric lens, then your anticipated refraction isn't going to be no sphere or minus 0.11 with five diopters of astigmatism. Your anticipated refraction is going to be plus two and a half minus five at about 82, dio 82 degrees. That's a terrible refraction for a patient. The spherical equivalent is almost zero, but in terms of fitting a contact lens, uh, it's much more complex. In terms of doing a top up PRK afterwards or a to top up LASIK, it really can't be done. You're flattening the cornea in one axis and steeping it in, in, steepening it in the other. So if you're intentionally using a non-astigmatism fixing lens or a non-toric lens in this patient, you should be aiming for a spherical equivalent of half that of the amount of astigmatism. So in this patient, you would need to be aiming for a spherical equivalent of minus two and a half. And then that would be leaving the patient around zero sphere with around minus 5.05 diopters at 82 degrees. Here's a more extreme example of a patient with a corneal graft, where the patient has an astigmatism of 13.02 diopters at 72 degrees. 
So again, if you were to put in the recommended 19 diopter lens, you're going to be leaving that patient plus six and a half with 13 diopters of uh, negative astigmatism. So if you want to minimize this patient's hyperopic component of their script, you really need to be aiming for minus six and a half in this patient. As I said, I'm not trying to cover everything about biometry in this video, that would take hours. Just trying to highlight some points and some common mistakes that people often make when uh, doing their biometry, checking their biometry, and most importantly, picking their intraocular lenses.